and like most humans, when you enter a room, and find a broken cup, and toppled chair, on the floor, you pick them up. And when this happens in dreams, you might find a broken man, underneath the chair, or a broken cup. And when I say a broken man, I really mean, a dead man. And like most humans, when you find a dead man in your dreams, you look for clues. And while you look for clues, I lay my clean folded handkerchief over the victim's sad and disfigured face. Because a sad and disfigured face, is not the kind of thing anyone should leave laying around within a dream. You hear the handkerchief as it covers the face. You say, how strange that I was able to hear that sound. Maybe that is a clue. And you collect the moment in your mind, and you write the moment down in your notepad, and you begin to feel drowsy. You look for more clues, as I sit on the couch, and when I sit on the couch, it makes a sound. And you say, maybe that sound is a clue as well. And you collect the moment in your mind, and in your notepad. You look at the walls of the room, and framed on the walls, you see vivid, splatters of paint, and think about house coats, and peacocks, and begin to feel sleepy. I find a letter in the couch and rise to hand it to you. I ask you, doctor, is this a clue? And I call you doctor, because you are at this moment, a doctor of mysteries. And I tell you my observation of the letter, and I say, there would be, power marks if it was the dead man who wrote this letter. It was his way of writing. What I thought of it at least. He would let out power, in his hands, and in his hands, a pen became a chisel. He forced letters into the paper. Every mark made permanent. He knew about paper, I hope. He knew about paper, I think. And I hand you the letter, and before you could read the letter, you saw that there were words, many words, and you wonder what you know about paper, and then like a tank surfacing from a bowl of tomato soup, you notice the words of the letter. And within the letter was written the following. Now you are asleep, and now you are ready for another dream. With your dream guide. Friend. This is the mystery, of the mystery, dream. In order to solve the mystery, of the Mr. Dream, we must begin, by searching for clues. It is a known fact, that the best place to look for clues is a forest. While clues often take the shape of natural objects, like bones are natural objects, oftentimes they stand out when in a natural setting. Of course, clues will appear in all kinds of settings, like libraries. This is also known. And we are in a forest, looking for clues. And you think you see a clue and pick it up. And it is a button. A copper button. And maybe it is a clue. Because after you find a button, then I find a button. Then you find another button. And then I find another button. This goes on. You ask me. Do you think there is a mystery here? I tell you. I do not know if the buttons are a mystery. But the buttons could form a line. Because a line is not always a straight extension of a point to another point. A line can curve and dip and be separated by great oceans of space. In fact, there is a line that connects every person to every mystery. And when I say mystery, I really mean another person. But this is the mystery, of the mystery dream, and everything and everyone, is either a mystery, or a clue. And while we are in a forest, picking up buttons from the ground, we are met by a line of ghost confederates, 
who haunted the forest, which are ghosts left over after one of the wars between the states. Because in your dreams, the states are always at war. And the ghosts stand before us, with their pants failing, with their pants down around their ankles, with their pants without the buttons we picked up from the ground, and we solve the mystery of the buttons, and we solve a mystery for the ghost confederates, who were stumbling through the forest, for a very long time, and would have stumbled through the forest, for an embarrassing eternity. And as soon as one mystery ends, another begins. Clues begin to fall from the sky. Tiny crystalline clues. What does this part of your dream mean? Stick out your tongue, and the clues will land and melt upon your tongue. There is a mystery taste to them, but it is impossible to taste, because think of how you are made of mostly water, but cannot taste water. In this moment, you are made of mystery and cannot taste mystery. And we do this for days, and we collect millions of clues with our tongues, and still, we are no closer to understanding the mystery. Think of the clues as snow, because in your dream, they all fall as snow. Snow is life experience made frozen, and broken into particles. Maybe your life is stuck in place. Maybe you are trying to make sense of a life experience, but feel unable to alter your thoughts about the life experience. Seek new ways to look at life. Seek a new way to thaw yourself from looking at a life experience in a certain way. And a new way to thaw yourself, is to keep moving. And to begin walking toward a safe and warm place. We walk from the forest to your house, and this takes days, because to collect clues with a tongue, and to walk at the same time, takes much longer than anyone could ever expect. We arrive at your house just as the mysteries pile up, with a coldness and height that would be dangerous to try to survive. You open the door and you are greeted by your holographic grandfather. He says to you, It was maybe eight minutes, from the time we ordered until the beauty arrived at our table. The flavors were not anything, like traditional pizza. The crust, was crispy, but not overly thin. What does this part of your dream mean? Do not be confused by your grandfather. This is the point, of his personality cycle, where all of his personality is based upon, reviews of restaurants, from his life when he was a person who enjoyed writing reviews of restaurants on websites, in exchange for exclusive offers, and the chance to win, luxury cruise packages. Keep his words in mind, as they are also a clue, within the mystery of the mystery dream. Outside of the house, the mysteries as snow, pile up, and the mailman cannot reach us. Which is good. Something like black milk pours from his eyes. We are in the days of the humming silence. Everyone is sick with it and no one has an answer as to why. In these days, as a person, you have the silence or you don't. And the silence appeared, like black milk from eyes, but that was only the advanced symptom. We watched from glass and safety, at the beautiful mysteries outside. Because it was beautiful to see the snow add hot each day. It was beautiful to see the figures of people in the snow. Who were maybe dressed. Or maybe not. But the figures were made pale, by the snow, and leaking out of silence, from their bodies. Sometimes, their skin seemed like a frozen, night pond. A pond, caught at night, beneath their bodies. A pond, just under, the glass of their skin. A skin you feel like you want to skate on. 
and you did want to skate on their skin. You put your index and middle fingers to the window and brush them through fog of your breath. You put your fingers on the glass and made them skate. Your hand became in control of a routine, like it had practiced in many ways throughout many other activities that were not skating. Isn't it amazing what a hand can do when left on its own? Doesn't it make you wonder about the faith of a hand, the drive of a hand, and the politics within them? Hands might skate off our arms if they could. If hands had a way to sever from us completely, and the skin of those outside, in the silence, made you want to skate your fingers across them. It felt perverted to you in a way, and being near the window glass was not safe, because the mailman saw us at the second story window. But do not worry, if there was any mind left within him, he would break through the door or windows below. But there was no mind in the mailman, only the silence. A silence that wants to quiet us. A silence that wants to reach for us through the mailman's arms. And the hands of silence were not thinking about skating on night ponds. And you felt sad for the mailman, because you did not know his name. You only knew him by his function, which is to deliver mail and packages to you. You step away from the window to wonder about all of the people in the world, and you wonder how they catalog you in their minds. Because now, at this moment, you are just one person without silence inside of your body and near a window, feeling safe, though you feel cold though you begin to feel colder, and your holographic grandfather drifts back into the room to tell you about a delightful donut experience. And you think you have solved the mystery of the mystery dream, and you pull off my face, and my face is a mask, and my new face is the face of the gentle pharmacist who cannot see the color yellow. But then I think I have solved the mystery of the mystery dream. And I pull off your face, and your face is a mask, and your new face is the face of Peter Fonda, and for a moment, I think I have fallen in love with you. But then you think you have solved the mystery of the mystery dream, and begin to wake up. And you pull off my face, and my face is a mask, and my new face is the face of the used pet store owner, which is covered in gray parrot feathers. But then I think I have solved the mystery of the mystery dream. And I pull off your face, and your face is a mask, and your new face is the face of the sad and disfigured victim from the beginning of the dream. But then you think you have solved the mystery of the mystery dream. And you pull off my face again, and now you are awake. And now you are ready for another day, and will collect clues that you will find during your new day, to solve the mysteries of your life. And maybe the mysteries of everyone's life. This has been the mystery of the mystery dream with your dream guide. Friend. Dream guides are written and recorded by Chad Redden.